Oh, hello there, everybody. <laughs> uh, this is Robert from RGL518, welcoming you to another exciting edition of Payoff Pitch 1985. Today's date is June 27th of this year, and it will be tonight. We got a good one tonight. We've got the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Toronto Blue Jays here at Exhibition Stadium. The Brewers come into this game at 37-29. and 29. The Blue Jays, 41-28. and 28. Both these teams have winning records. Both these teams are fighting hard in the American League East to get into that top three spot and get into the playoffs at the end of the season. Let's take a quick look at, this, at the standings. And as you can see, the Blue Jays, of course, with a 41-28 and 28 lead, do lead. And the Yankees are in second place with 39 wins. The, the Tigers are 38. And Milwaukee is at 37. So they're one game, one win back of Detroit for that coveted third spot in each division. Remember, in my, in my replay, the top three teams in each division make the playoffs. We got a good pitching duel tonight, too, so I'm hoping for a good one. We've had a lot of high scoring the last couple of games. Let's see if we get a good pitcher's game here tonight. Starting pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays will be Jimmy Key. He was 14-6 and six of the 3-0 ERA. He adds 20 to the tough rolls. He is a strong pitcher, and that's who the Blue Jays send to the mound tonight. Captain Carl Eight is first here at Exhibition Stadium. That means it is your job to give out the food and the drink. We got a big game tonight, Brewers and the Blue Jays, both top four, both in the top four of the American League East. We are getting closer to the All-Star break. Let's see how things go in this matchup. Leading off for the Brewers will be third baseman Paul Molitor. He, of course, is a lefty, and Molitor batted 324 against the lefts in 85. Pitch on the way. That's an in-play 47. Molitor is going to pop that up to second. And that is the first out. Next batter up is the second baseman, Jim Gantner. Gantner batted 329 against lefties in 85. Key with the pitch. Wheelhouse 66. That's right over the plate. But all Gantner can do with it is fly it out the left field. He really didn't have much home run power against lefties. He had actually had no home runs at all against lefties in 85. That's just a fly out the left. So Key got away with that pitch. First baseman Cecil Cooper. Uh, this guy was a monster. 321 average, six homers against the lefties in 85. He will check and deal. And that's a defense check 21. That could be interesting. And we got an error check to short. The ball is hit to Fernandez. His error rating is a three. One to 51 is going to be an error. That's a 21, and that's exactly what it is. And it's going to be a two base error. So pretty much the ball is at the Fernandez, and he throws it away. And Cooper's going to wind up on second base. That is an E6. And the first error on the Blue Jays. Next batter up will be a certain Hall of Famer, left fielder Robin Yount. Batted 300 with four homers against lefties in 85. Blue Jays originally won this game 7-3. to three. That's the historical score. Cooper on at second. Key with the pitch. And that is a tough. 91, and that will be a ground out to short. The throw goes to first for out for the final out of the inning. Nothing for the Brewers except an error, so they are going to have to be happy stranding a runner on second base. Bottom half of the first. As I said, this is a good pitching matchup. Starting pitcher for the Brewers was their lefty that year. It is Teddy Higuera, 15-8, 3 9 Very good pitcher. I like the pitching matchup I was able to get in this game between Higuera and Key. Leading off for the Blue Jays, second baseman Damaso Garcia. Higuera also a lefty. Garcia bats 251 against the lefties. Steeler fan and Dave Gardner now joins us here at Exhibition Stadium for this very good matchup between two American League East leaders. 
pitch from Higuera. Defense check 20, that could be an issue. Error check back to Higuera. His error rating is a one, not a chance. He's going to boot that ball, and that is going to get by him, actually. It's going to be a single and an error. So it's an infield single. So Higuera tries to pick him up, still make a play, and throws it away. And Garcia winds up on second base. So a single and an E1, and that's the first error on the Brewers. Interesting way for this game to start. Here is the center fielder, Lloyd Mosby. Mosby batted 256 with seven homers against the left. Not a problem there, Mr. Gardner, and awesome. Always great when you join us for any game, whether it's inside pitch or a payoff pitch. I'm always happy to have you here. I'm happy to have all my chat members here. And even if nobody shows up for my game, that's fine. I know you guys are watching on the replay. Here is Mosby, pitch from Higuera. That's a tough 31, and we've got a swing and a miss. Struck him out. First strikeout for Higuera, he averaged about 5.4 per nine. Next up is the left fielder, George Bell. Batted 252, 11 homers against lefties. George Bell, was he was only 25 years old this year, but Bell was already up and coming. He was, he was turning into one of the Blue Jays' better hitters. And I always felt George Bell was underrated. This guy could play ball. Pitch from Higuera. That's a tough 55, and I'm going to give, and that will be a ground ball to third. The throw will go to first for out number two. With a run rating of seven, I'm not going to have Garcia go to third, so that is, he will stay there at second. His run rating would have to be an eight in order to make third base for me to allow it. Here comes another underrated player, and that is Jesse Barfield. Barfield, right fielder in this game, batted 309 with nine homers against lefties in 85. Garcia still stuck on at second, but Higuera trying to get out of the jam. Pitch to Barfield. That's a tough 69, and that will be a fly ball right field, and that will be caught by Bruhard, and the inning will end there. No runs, a hit, an error. At the end of one, we've got no score. As I think I'm hoping for a pretty good duel between these two pitchers. Top of inning number two coming up. Leading off for the Brewers is the designated hitter, Ted Simmons. Batted 307 with seven homers against the lefties. Key with the pitch. That's a tough 88. It's a ground ball to short. A throw goes to first for out number one. Remember, he has an extra 20 on the tough rolls, so it makes him a little bit stronger against the tough bat against on tough pitches. It can also be a hindrance because that can also turn a strikeout into a hit. Here is Ernie Ryle, shortstop for the Brewers. Pitch from Key. That's a tough 72. That will be a grounder to short again. Up with it is Fernandez. Throws to first. Out number two. And now Mark Bruhard. He is in right field for this game. Batted 253 against the lefties. Keys pitch. Tough. 81. That's a fly ball center field. And Mosby puts it away. And a one, two, three inning for Jimmy Key. Of course, Jimmy Key would be a future Yankee. As we remember, as of course, we watched Jimmy Key pitch for the Yankees in my 1994 uh, season restart. Of course, we all know where the Yankees wound up in that uh, restart. Uh, they were kicked out of the playoffs. Just a little something for you, Hanky, for you Yankee fans or haters out there. Bottom half of the second. Jeff Burrows gets the call here for the Blue Jays. He is the designated hitter. Batted 266. He had six homers against left. A little power. Pitch from Higuera. That's a nine. That's an in play 03. It will be a blasted double into left field. Burrows is going to wind up on second base. And that is the second hit of the game for the Blue Jays. First hit for Burrows. 
First baseman Willie Upshaw comes up, batted 275. He had five homers against lefties in 85. Runner on second base, Higuera with the pitch. Tough, 43, and that is a popped up behind the plate. That's going to get caught by the catcher, Huppert. That's out number one. That's caught in foul territory. Catching for the Blue Jays in this game was Buck Martinez. Only batted 138 with three homers against lefties. little surprised he got the call for this one, but not exactly sure. He won't be with the Blue Jays much longer. After July 9th, he is no longer on the team. Higuera will pitch. And we got a patient 78. That's a ground ball to short. The throw is going to go to first for out number two. Burrows with a run rating of four has no chance to get the third base. He'll stay right there. Two down. Dave Little joins us here at Exhibition Stadium. Here is Garth Orge. Orge is at third base for this game. Batted 310 with five homers against lefties. I felt another underrated player the Blue Jays had during the 80s. Pitch from Higuera. That's an in-play 35. That will be a single for Orge. Since Jeff Burroughs has a run rating of four, I actually have to draw. It's a ball blooped into right field, and the runner will only advance one base. So Burrow has to hold at third. Does not have the speed to score. But that is a base hit. Here's the shortstop for the Jays, Tony Fernandez. Batted 294 against lefties in 85. Good matchup between two teams with winning records here in the mid midway part of this replay. Here's the pitch from Higuera. And that is a tough 21. Fernandez will fight that off. That's going to be a single for Fernandez. It will score Burroughs, obviously. Orge with a run rating of five. I will draw the line. It's a sharp liner into center field. Orge will hold at second as he's not going to be able to move any further on that. Fernandez does get the base hit, and the Blue Jays take the lead one to nothing. Exhibition Stadium uh, pl applauds the run. Not a good base, not a good place for baseball. Really not. And I'll be honest, as much as I like the uh, Rogers Center or that, or, or as will be known earlier as Sky Dome, I don't think that was a. I don't think that's a great place for baseball either. I don't know. It's really not a baseball stadium. I, I just don't know. Maybe it's just me for the Blue Jays. And I like Toronto. I have nothing against the Jays. Here's Demiso Garcia. He's singled his first time up. Runners at first and second, two outs. Here is the pitch from Higuera. And that is an end play, 91. It's a ground ball to short. Easy pickup. The throw is going to go to first to get Garcia, and the inning will end there. One run for Toronto on three hits. At the end of two, the Blue Jays are up one to nothing on the Brew Crew. Third inning coming up. Leading off for the Brewers in this game is Bobby Clark. He got the call at center field for this game. He batted 243 against lefties in 85. So you got a few uh, baseball players here we, don't, we haven't seen often. And some we may never see again in a replay. Here's the pitch from Key. And that's a tough 28. And it will be a swing and a miss. Struck him out. He gets Clark. Next up for the Brewers is Dave Huppert. He was the catcher for this game. He only had a couple of starts, only 21 at-bats for the season. But this is the game he did start, and he has absolutely no average against lefties. So the only way he gets on base pretty much is a walk or a failed range play. 
Keys pitch. And there's a wheelhouse, and a wheelhouse 68 is a fly out to center field. That's just bad. When the Even when a pitcher throws over the plate, the only way you get a single against the lefty is a one. <laughs> and if that was a one, I, would have, I, I wouldn't have believed it. But that is a 60, that's at 68, and that's just a fly out to center. And that's out number two. Some of the cards that uh, Joe Bryan makes are kind of funny to look at. Here's Molitor. Molitor popped out his last time up. Hall of Famer, of course. That's a tough 46. And we've got a pop out to second base again as he gets under this one. And it's a one, two, three inning. Go the Brewers. Still one nothing in favor of the Jays. Lloyd Mosby will take his first hacks for the people, for the team north of the border. SDGR Replays joins us here at Exhibition Stadium. Aguero with the pitch. Wheelhouse 66. That's a base hit for Mosby. Aguero put it right over the plate. Mosby was able to get some of it and at least popped it into uh, center field. Base hit, and the batter is George Bell. 5C steal rating, Mosby not running. Higuera will pitch. We got a defense check, 23. That could be trouble. Error check to the pitcher, Higuera. His error rating is a 1. That's a 23. No chance Higuera is going to commit his second error of the game, and it's a 1 base error. Higuera tried to pick it up and throw it first, but he threw it wide of the bag. And now we got runners at first and second and nobody out. That's another E1. Second error on the Brewers. Now the Blue Jays have a big chance. Here is Jesse Barfield. Barfield is 0 for 1. Here's the pitch from Higuera. That's it in play, 92. It's a ground ball to short. Barfield's double play rating's a 7. Higuera's a 6. That's a 6. They'll turn it. Shortstop to second to first. Two outs. Mosby does go to third. The 6-4-3 double play. Next batter will be Jeff Burrows with two outs now. Take care there, Mr. Gardner. Looking forward to doing, working forward to watching your material. As your material is always tough. Remember, people, Dave Gardner has an awesome channel. Please make sure you subscribe to it. He is terrific at what he does. Mosby on at third. Higuera will pitch to Burrows. Two outs. Pitch on the way. That is a tough 57. He'll get out of the inning. A ground ball to third. Throw goes to first, and that will do it. No runs for the Blue Jays on one hit and an error. At the end of three, still one nothing Toronto. As I always like to let you know what's coming up on pay on my channel as we enter the fourth inning of this game tomorrow on Inside Pitch 1985. Dave Little, you better not miss it. It is game number 19 of the 1985 One and Gone. The third round begins. It's the Chicago Cubs taking on your Cincinnati Reds. And it's going to be a very interesting pitching matchup. Steve Trout will go for the Cubs. Jay Tibbs. For the Reds, that could be very interesting between those two. So we've got the Cubs and the Reds tomorrow. And on payoff pitch tomorrow, we, we go back to the National League. The Philadelphia Phillies will play the Montreal Expos. Again, those teams are very much in the, mid, in the midseason playoff hunt. So we got that matchup tomorrow. Phillies and the Expos tomorrow on payoff pitch 85. Top of the fourth inning, Jim Gantner leads off for the Brewers. Keys pitch. That's a patient 42. It's going to be a single for Gantner. 
That's the first hit given up by Key. And Gantner will trot down to first as he hit that one in the left. He'll hold it first base. That will bring up Cecil Cooper with one out. Gantner not stealing. No bunt or sacrifice, anything like that. Key will pitch. It's a seven. That's an in-play 70. It's a fly ball to left field. That'll be caught by Bell. That's out number one. Hall of Famer Robin Yount will take a swing. Pitch from Key. Tough, 95. Fly ball left field again. Bell makes the catch out number two. And now can Ted Simmons try to get Gantner in? Gantner still stuck at first base. Simmons looking on. Here's the pitch from Key. Key deals in play 40. And Simmons is going to pop that one out to second base as well. He gets way under it. And the inning will end there. One hit for the Brewers. That's all they get. It's still a one nothing Jays lead. Willie Upshaw will take his swing for the Blue Jays. Upshaw is 0 for 1. Pitch coming from Higuera. That's a tough 32. That's a swipe. That's a strikeout. Swing and a miss. Got him. And that is strikeout number two for Higuera. Out number one. Here's Buck Martinez. Pitch from Higuera. That's a patient 36. And Martinez slaps that one into center field. It will bounce off the wall. Martinez will slide into second base with a double. That's his first base hit of the game. Runner on second for Garth Orge. Orge is one for one. He singled his last time up. His first time up, I would say. Martinez on its second. Higuera will pitch. And that is a tough double zero. We got a rare play, and we're using the new – I am using the rare plays from the season ticket baseball uh, that, I that I decided to download and try them out. So let's see what we got here. We have a runner on second. So we go to page eight, and let's roll the dice and see if we can translate it into payoff pitch. So we roll the, we roll the red, the black, and the zero. And that is going to be a, a, a three six eight, And it's going to be a fielder's choice. High chopper to third base. Second baseman is caught in a rundown. Is caught in a rundown. He is tagged out if shortstop successfully challenges the speed rating. Otherwise, he is the runner on second is safe at third base. Either way, batter is safe at first on a fielder's choice. So, Buck Martinez, in this case, I'll say Buck Martinez's run rating is a six. The run rating of the shortstop for the, for the Brewers is Riles. His run rating is a five, which beats Buck Martinez. In that case, Buck Martinez is out. Orge is safe at first. That's how I'm going to read that. That is how I'm going to read that, and I think it actually makes good choice. If, his, if Buck Martinez's run rating was higher than the field than the fielder's run rating, I would have said Martinez would have been safe. So Martinez is out. He is caught in a rundown. Orge is safe at first. And there is one out. That's one way to – actually, that's two outs on a fielder's choice. That's how I'm going to – that's how I'm going to run that play. And for those of you who are wondering where I got that from – that's it right there. These are the rare plays from Clay Dreslock's beta version of season ticket baseball. He's got a lot of things that can happen in here. And I looked at it. I said with a few changes, it can be converted to payoff pitch with a few uh, with, a, with a few certain stats. And I like it. And it's good enough for me. He is out. He is tagged out. And Orge is safe at first. 
Here's Tony Fernandez. Two outs now. If anybody has any issues with that, that do play uh, this game, because I know uh, that play this, I understand that. But I like the new rare plays. It gives a little bit more, um, a little bit, a little bit more flavor. The rare play chart I was using all the time uh, from that downloadable, I thought was kind of plain. Here's the pitch from Miguel Fernandez. That is a ballpark 97. That's in play. In play 16 is going to be a single for Tony Fernandez. I will draw a card. Grounder up the middle of the center field. Orge will hold at second. His run rating is only a five, so he has to. I have to draw. But Fernandez has his second hit of the game. He's now two for two. And a chance now for Damaso Garcia with two outs. King Garcia bringing a big run for the Jays. Higuera with the pitch. That's a tough 77. He'll get out of it. Five ball center field put away by Clark. No runs for Toronto on two hits. They're getting base runners, but they're not getting them in. They do have one. They still lead 1-2-0. And by the way, the uh, conversion I did for that rare play, I did that on the fly because I kind of figure if it's got to challenge it, it's going to be speed. If there was, if if both running ratings were tied, usually in a rundown the runner loses, and I would have and and I would have probably given it to the shortstop anyway because runners usually don't win in a rundown. Very very rare. I might have rolled the die. It's possible I could have rolled the die. I might have done it as a I might have done it as a coach's choice in a play at third. Might have done it as a coach's choice. Could have done that too, if it was tied. We go to the top of the fifth. Here is Ernie Riles going up against Key. Pitch from Key. That's a ballpark 35. That is in Riles' wheelhouse. He doesn't have any home run power. Oh, you know what? I'm supposed to draw. And a 99, well, it wouldn't matter anyway. It's a fly ball to right field, and it's still out. Usually draw on a wheelhouse check, and that's a 99. And Ryle still flies out the right, and that's out, num out the right, and that's out number one. Here's Mark Bruhard. He makes a mistake, but Ryles couldn't do anything with it. Keys pitch. In play, 47. It's a ground ball right back to Key. They'll toss it to first for out number one. A nice underhand toss. Next up for the Brewers is Clark. Clark is 0 for 1. Pitch on the way. That's a tough 54. And we've got a ground ball to third picked up easily by Orge. And he'll throw to first for the final out. Halfway through the ball game, 1 to nothing in favor of the Jays. Higuera will pitch to Lloyd Mosby. Higuera's getting lucky with defense, that's for sure. But he's allowed a number. He's already he's already given up seven hits. Pitch from Higuera. And that's a tough 53. It's a line drive right to short put away by Riles. That's out number one. Here is George Bell. Bell reached on base on an error. He's 0 for 1. Higuera will pitch. Tough. 76. That's a fly ball center field. Put away by Clark. Out number 2. And so far I am getting the pitching matchup I was hoping I would get between two aces. Here is Barfield. Barfield is 0 for 2. Higuera with the pitch. That's a patient 33. It's a walk. And Barfield trots down to first. That is the first walk issued by Higuera. He averaged only about 2.7 per nine. 
four C steal rating. The steal is available if Barfield wants to go. He had 22 stolen bases, and the steal rating is a four. It's a C. So let's see. What chance would it be? C. Huppert's arm rating is a four. It would be a C4. It'd be a very good chance to go. Why not? In order to go, though, he has to be high, lower than Higuera's hold rating. Hold rating for Higuera is a four. Not high enough. Barfield will go. Very good chance to throw down to the throw down to second. It's a stolen base and a possible error. The error rating for Huppert, his error rating is a one. Is a one. So we roll one D6. And it is a three. And it's going to go into the outfield. Barfield's going to third. Actually, I should have drawn the card. And the four is still there. But that's okay. Throws it away. Barfield goes to third. It is a stolen base and an error on the catcher. That is an E2. That is the third error on the Brewers in this game. But still two outs, and Burroughs will try to get Barfield in. So we've got some good base running going on here and not good throwing by the Brew Crew. Two outs. Higuero will pitch to Burroughs, and that is a tough 25, and it's a swing and a miss. Struck him out. So after all that excitement, nothing for the Blue Jays. No runs, no hits. There was an error and a walk at the end of five. Still one nothing north of the border. Kind of refreshing to get a good pitcher's duel finally after the high scores we've had the last few games here in payoff pitch. Top of the sixth coming up. Here is Dave Huppert. Comes up to bat. Pitch from Key. And that is a patient 97. It's a fly out the left. That's the first out. Paul Molitor comes up next. Molitor was only 28 years old in 85. And he was already pretty much. They were already talking about Hall of Fame for him at that time. Pitch from Key. Tough. 67 because of the extra 20 roll, and that's going to be a ground out to third. Throw to first, out number two. Molitor is 0 for 3. A chance for Gantner. Pitch from Key. That's a tough 0 3, but becomes a tough 23, and that is a single for Gantner. As I've showed you before, this is where this can be a hurt. If it remained an 0-3, that would be a strikeout. But a 23 is a single for Gantner, and it keeps the inning alive. Base hit for Gantner. That's his second hit of the game. A chance now for Cecil Cooper with two outs. He's pitch. That's a defense 30. That's a wild pitch, first of all. It's a wild pitch by Key. It goes to the backstop. Gantner will go to second. Wild pitch sends Gantner to second. Now we resolve the play. And that was a defense 30. And again, that's an error check to the shortstop. The ball is hit to Fernandez. His error rating is a three, and that's going to be an error with that 30. And it's going to be a single and an error. That's gigantic. So Gantner will score on a single plus one, and Cooper goes to second on a single and goes to second on an error. That's an error again on the shortstop. So that is a, we got a one base hit. And you have an E6. That does allow Gantner to score on the error. That is the second error on that's the second error on the Blue Jays, and we're tied at one. So on one roll, you get a wild pitch, then you get a single in it, and you get a single in an error, and allows the Brewers to tie this game up at one.
Oh, that wild pitch was huge because it allowed Gantner to score. And now the go-ahead run on second base for Yount. Already five errors in this game. There were two historically. Cooper at second. Key will pitch. And what we got here, a tough 94. That's a fly ball to left, and the inning will come to an end there. Ugly inning, though, but one run on two hits, one error, and a wild pitch. We are tied at one going into the bottom of the sixth. Willie Upshaw comes up to bat. He's 0 for 2 here in the bottom of the sixth inning here. Pitch coming from Higuera. That's an in play, 48. And at the ground ball, back to Higuera. He'll toss it over to first. And that's the first out. Here's Buck Martinez. Martinez doubled his last time up, 1 for 2. Pitch from Higuera, tough, 28, and we've got a ground ball again back to Higuera. He's got it, comebacker, tosses over to first for out number two. Two outs. Garth Orge will now take a swing. He's one for two. He's singled earlier. Pitch from Higuera. Patient 45. That's a single. Orge just smacks that into center field. Base hit. Orge has his second hit of the game. And now it allows Tony Fernandez. Fernandez is two for two. He's got two singles. Can the Blue Jays take advantage of this? Pitch from Higuera. Tough, 53, not a chance there. It's a ground ball again to Teddy Higuera. He makes all three outs in this game. He throws the first, and the inning ends there. I think that may be the first time I've actually had a pitcher, ground out, pitcher get all three ground outs in an inning. No runs, but a hit at the end of six, tied at one. And I'm happy I'm getting a game like this between two teams that are in the tops of the division. And that's what you would like to see as we now get closer and closer into the getting near playoff mode. Well, now I'm now only going to start showing teams that are pretty much in the hunt. As I've already removed the bottom four teams in each division, okay, the bottom teams in each division uh, from uh, scheduling. I will only schedule if I absolutely have no other choice in order if, I, if that's the only game on the board for the day I've chosen. I know you guys understand. I also know you guys don't care who I play. You don't care if it's a game between the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox or a game between the San Diego Padres and the Pittsburgh Pirates. A lot of you will still watch it. Of course, I know I get more people watching the game if it's a Red Sox-Yankees game. I, I, I understand that. I'm beginning to learn that doing this channel is like actually doing a television channel. Ratings do matter depending who you're playing. I, I get that. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Top of the seventh here. It is Ted Simmons leading off for the Brewers. Jimmy Key's fatigue inning is the sixth. He's still strong. He's going to go. See how much longer he can go as we go into the seventh inning. Key's pitch on the way. Defense, 96. That should be a problem. Error check to first base. Upshaw's got an error rating of three. That 51 beats the uh, is, does not beat the 96. That's a nice play by Upshaw. He'll throw to Key covering the bag. That's out number one. Here is Ernie Riles. Riles is 0 for 2. Pitch from Key. Tough, 71. It's a ground ball to short. Throw again goes to first by Fernandez. That's the second now. Mark Bruhard comes up next. Key will pitch. And that is a tough. 47. It's a swing and a miss. Struck him out. 
And that is strikeout number two for Jimmy Key. He wasn't much of a strikeout pitcher, although he had three point, only 3.6 strikeouts per nine. Wasn't much of a strikeout pitcher. But yeah, and I'm not surprised he got the toughs because the toughs pretty much avoid the strikeouts a bit. That's why he added it. It's a one, two, three inning for the Brewers. And we are at the seventh inning stretch. Sing your take me out to the ball game. Tied at one. We will be right back as Dave at Baseball Demos joins us here at Exhibition Stadium. Be right back. You need to get one of those D10s with the zeros on it. Just go to your local gaming shop or uh, Amazon. You can get a pack of dice that's got those zeros on it. Trust me, it makes things a, little, a lot easier. Instead of having to guess, I automatically know what the 10-sided die is there, baseball. Demos. I got a couple of colors uh, with, the, with, with that on there. Got a couple of colors. Bottom of the seventh inning coming up. And, of course, for those of you who don't know about Baseball Demos, uh, you should check out his channel. He does it all. Top of the order for the Blue Jays. Here's Damaso Garcia to start the bottom of the seventh inning. Remember, tomorrow we got the Reds. We got the Chicago Cubs and the Reds on inside pitch for the 85-1 of gone. The beginning of the third round starts. And tomorrow night, we will have the Phillies and the Expos on payoff pitch. And that's a matchup between two teams that are in the hunt. Higuera, that is a tough 29. And, oh, he popped it up. That's a pop out to second. That's out number one. Uh, he just beat that at 29 and just beats it. That's out number one. Here is Lloyd Mosby. Higuera with the pitch. That's a ballpark 07. That's in Mosby's wheelhouse. No doubt about that. And a wheelhouse 17. Crack. That ball is hit high. That ball is hit deep. And that ball is over the right field fence as he as he went ahead and and went opposite field on it. It is gone. Lloyd Mosby solo home run. Stadium cheers. Yay. Two to one Blue Jays as Lloyd Mosby gets all of that. He did hit seven homers against left-handed pitching and he gets it. It's now two to one Blue Jays. Here's George Bell. Bell is 0 for 2, reached on base with an error. Higuera mad at himself. He pitched he pitched Mosby a meatball, and meatball, and and Mosby turned it into into lasagna. Pitch from Higuera. That's an eight. That's a tough eighty, and that will be a fly out to center for out number two. And now Jesse Barfield. Barfield is zero for two, walked and got on, and got to second base on an error. Pitch from Higuera. That's a tough 41. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That is strikeout number three for Higuera. 
And that ends the inning. One run on a solo blast by Mosby. It's two to one Blue Jays at the end of seven. And a good matchup between two teams with winning records here in the replay. Top of the eighth inning coming up. Jimmy Key is pitching a gem. He's given up one run. Got three right-handers coming up. May go to the pen here for the Blue Jays. Let's see. May go to the pen. Let me see if I want to bring in a pinch or let me. I don't know. He's a, this is the eighth inning. Let's see what they want to do. And they're going to do just that. Jimmy Key is going to come out of the game. He's pitched beautifully, yes. But they're going to go to the setup, man, and that will be Dennis Lamp. Dennis Lamp, 11-0 with a 3-3-2 ERA. He will come in and try to set it up for the closer. It also turns Bobby Clark around. He bats 174 against Wright. And I could bring in a pinch hitter for the Brewers in this case. Let's see what we can do here against the righty. Let's see who they got. And they will do just that. Clark is also in center field. So Bobby Clark's going to come out. And the Brewers are going to bring in Ben Ogilvy. He had 266 at-bats against righties. He will come in. And taking over at center field will be Rick Manning. But Ben Ogilvy gets the call against Dennis Lamp here in the top of the eighth inning. Let's see if we play a little chess against ourselves. Always wind up playing chess. C18. Let's make sure I can change this. Here's the pitch from Lamp. And that's a patient 88. And it's going to be a ground out to second base. The throw goes to first for out number one. He gets Oglavy. And the batter now is Dave Huppert. We'll probably see a pinch hitter for him as well. Probably a change at catcher as well. As well. Um, let's see what we want to do here. Yeah, Dave Huppert's going to come out. And coming in to play and the bat and cap takeover at catcher will be Charlie Moore. He had 226 at bats against the righty. So Moore will now take over at catcher. And he'll go up against Lamp. One out. Pitch from Lamp. That's a 10. That's an in that's an in play 10. And Charlie Moore is gonna get a base hit. He hits that one into right field, and the Brewers get the tying run aboard. Single for Charlie Moore. Here's Paul Molitor. Lamp checking in, now looking in at Molitor. One out here in the top of the eighth. Pitch from Lamp. That's an in play, 18. That's a single for Molitor. It's a base hit. It's a sharp liner into center field. Moore will hold at second. He will not move any further than that. And now the Brewers are in business with, an out, with one out. Molitor gets his first hit of the game. Now the dangerous Jim Gantner. Gantner is two for three in this game. They're going to go talk to Dennis Lamp for a moment, see if he can settle him down a bit. Tribe Fan 879 joins us here at Exhibition Stadium. And it looks like, Tribe Fan, you can keep your name for one more year. After that, you're probably going to have to change it. As the, Indi as the owner for the Indians said, they're still going to be known as the Indians this year. But next year, they will be out, they will be under a name change. So you can keep your Tribe fan one more year. After that, you're going to have to change it, I think. Runners at first and second. I still think it's stupid. Trust me, Tribe fan. I think changing the Indians' name, changing the Redskins' name, all that crap is stupid. Here we go. Lamps pitch. That's a tough 76 and it's a fly ball center field. That'll be caught by Mosby, out number two. 
It's a tough, so Moore has to stay at second. And the batter will be Cecil Cooper. Um, nope, you're not going to try to make everyone re-guess who I am. <laughs> you know what? Okay, I can, ex I can accept that answer. Here is Cecil Cooper, very dangerous. Runners at first and second, two outs. Lamp will pitch to Cooper. Here it comes. That's a ballpark, 28. Oh, no. That's against the lefty, and that is a wheelhouse. Cecil Cooper, wheelhouse, 23. Yep, you guessed it. Kablam! That ball is high, deep, and gone. Cecil Cooper, three-run jack off of Dennis Lamp. Stadium groans. <sighs> Wheelhouse 23 against the righty is a clean out of here. It is a three-run homer for Cooper. A well-pitched game by Jimmy Key goes by the board. It's now four to two Brewers. Oh, wow. The Brew Crew, Cecil Cooper, and he hit 16 home runs that year, and 10 of them were against right-handers, and it's now 4-2 to two as Dennis Lamp blows it. Next batter is Robin Yount. That's going to be it for Lamp. He is coming out of the game, as now he is no longer needed as a setup. So coming on to pitch now for the coming on to pitch now will be uh, let's see, you got a righty. It's still only a two-run game. They're gonna bring in Jim Acker. Seven and two, three, two, three, ERA. Robin Yelp will go up against Acker now with two outs. I agree, Captain. I agree, Captain Carl. The Native Americans didn't have a problem with it. They were not offended. They didn't have. Matter of fact, they were actually they were they were actually uh, amused. They were amused by it. They. I. I don't think it's bright to do either. I look. You know, to change the name of the Redskins after all these years, the Indians. And let me ask you a question now. Okay, so you change the Indians. You change the Redskins. What about the Atlanta Braves? What about the Chicago Blackhawks? What about the Kansas City Chiefs? What do you do with those guys? Because they're all based on Native American uh, symbolism. The Chiefs have an arrowhead. The Chicago Blackhawks literally have an Indian head on the front of their uh, on the front of their jersey. Okay, and the Braves have a tomahawk. So come on, what do you do with those teams now? It's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. They should leave it alone. Robin Yelp, the batter. Pitch from Acker. Tough. 89. That will end the inning. A ground out to short. And the throw goes to first. And the inning is over. But what an inning for the Brewers. Three runs on three hits. Cecil Cooper sends one over the right field fence. Four to two Brewers now. As Tribe Fan says, Lamp blew a fuse. Jeff Burroughs is the leadoff hitter for the Blue Jays. The Brewers are going to take out Teddy Higuera. He is done. They got two rights and a left coming up. So let's see who the, who the Brewers want to bring out the pitch. And they will go with Bob Gibson. Not the Bob Gibson, but Bob Gibson. Gibson, 6-7, and seven, a 3 9 ERA. He had 11 saves in the game. FSU was asked years ago to change. And the Seminole said, it said yeah, I know. Like I said, you got, you got, remember, you got the Illinois fighting Illini. That's uh, Indian related. You know, you have them. I mean, come on. It's ridiculous. 
This politically correct stuff getting a little bit too crazy. Pitch to Burroughs from Gibson. That's a tough 62, and that will be a fly ball to right field, out number one. Next up is Willie Upshaw. Dave Little says what he's got there. We got one out. Gibson will pitch to Upshaw. And that is an in play 90. It's a ground ball to second base. Up with it is easily Gantner. Throws the first for out number two. And here is Buck Martinez. And also uh, the Arkansas State Indians. Remember the Arkansas State Indians? They were also they were known as the Indians. Uh, they became the Arkansas State Red Wolves. They became the ABA State Red Wolves now. Um, who else did it change? It wasn't just them either. Uh, remember the St. John's Redmen? They're just no, you know, that now they're the St. John's Red Storm. The Syracuse Orange Men. One of uh, my favorite college basketball team, actually, well, along with the Miami Hurricanes down here. Syracuse, now just known as the Syracuse Orange. Pitch from Gibson to Martinez. Patient 92. That's a fly ball to left field getting caught by Yount. And it's a 1-2-3 inning by Gibson. At the end of eight, four to two, Brewers. Top of the ninth inning. Ted Simmons leads off for the Brew Crew. He's 0 for 3. Um, you got a switch hitter, a left and a right. Acker will stay out there. He'll pitch to Simmons. Pitch from Jim Acker. And that is an in play double zero. We have another rare play. So let's go to our new rare playbook and let's see what we come up with. We roll the we roll the red, the black, and the white, and that is a five o nine. So let's see what we got. Five o nine with the bases empty on the utilizing the season ticket baseball rare playbook, and I'll bring it up there so you can read it. Five o nine e two batter is safe at second on throwing error by the catcher. All runners advance two bases. So there are no runners, but a throwing air by the catcher puts Ted Simmons on at first, at second base. So the ball was grounded at the plate, and the it was grounded at the plate, and Simmons was on his way to first, and the catcher, which was Martinez, he threw the ball away uh, into the outfield, and Simmons goes to second. So I'm going to say that's what happened there. So that is an error. On, that's an E2 which allows Simmons to go to second, and that is the third error on the Blue Jays. Another possible thing I could have said may be an error, but it's not a challenge. It automatically came up that way, so that's good enough for me. Here's Ernie Riles. Simmons on at second on a big error, 4-2. to two. Pitch from Acker. That's an in play, 76. It's a fly ball center field. And that will be caught by Mosby on an in play. Ted Simmons will not have an opportunity to go to thirds. So that's out number one. In play fly balls. The runner at second has to stay along with tough. Patient or wheelhouse, yes. Here's Mark Bruhard. One out. Bruhard is 0 for 3. Pitch coming. Wheelhouse 0-1. And that's going to be a double for Bruhard. He has absolutely no homers against righties. But that one is good enough to give him a double. Simmons will come around to score with no trouble at all. As he hits that double off the left field wall. Bruhard safe at second. And the Brewers have come from behind in this game to steal it. And now lead it 5-2.
RBI double by Brewhard. Five to two Brewers now. And here is Rick Manning. Rick Manning took over center field for Clark. And he'll bat against Acker. Still one out here on the top of the ninth. Pitch from Acker. And that's an in-play, 46. It's a line drive right to short. Bruhard gets back. That's out number two. Here's Charlie Moore. Moore came in for Dave Huppert at catcher. He'll bat. As the as the Blue Jays had a big had a bit at a nice uh, one one to nothing lead, and then the Brewers tied it up and have now scored uh, five, four run uh, five runs since then. Actually, well, actually, no, the, the Blue Jays did get a run in the bottom of the seventh. Pitch from Acker. That's a tough 47, and we've got a ground ball back to Acker. He'll throw it over to first, and that will end the inning. One run for the Brewers on one hit and an error. Will we see some ninth inning magic? Five to two Brewers. Brewers will bring in the closer. And it will be Raleigh Fingers. Not a safe situation, but Fingers is coming in to get this game done. One and six, 504 ERA at 17 saves. Leading off for the Blue Jays will be Garth Orge. He will hit against Fingers with a 318 average against Wrights. Fingers will pitch to Orge. That's an 11. It's a patient 40. And that is a leadoff base hit by Orge. It's a single. He hits that one to right. Orge having a good night tonight. He's three for four, three singles. A chance now for Tony Fernandez. Can the Blue Jays take this game away? 3F steal rating, nothing going on. Fernandez will hit. You're down by three runs anyway. You're not stealing anything. Pitch from fingers. It's a tough 46. It's a pop-up in the infield, and it's going to be too short. Pop out to short, out number one. Orge stays at first. Here is Damaso Garcia. Garcia is one for four tonight, has a single. Raleigh Fingers, the man with the best mustache in baseball history, pitches to Garcia. That's a patient 10, and that is a double for Damaso Garcia as he smacks it off of Fingers. It's a drive down the line to right field. Runners advance two bases. Orge will hold at third. Garcia on at second. What? Did you expect a one, two, three inning? And here is Lloyd Mosby. The tying run is now at the plate. Runners at second and third. They're going to go talk to Fingers about it. Mosby already has a home run in this game. He's two for four. Big at bat coming up here. There is one out. They will pitch to Mosby. You do not put the tying run on base. You try to keep it off. George Bell waiting on deck. Orge at third. Garcia second. Fans here at Exhibition Stadium think maybe they can steal it back. Here's the pitch from Fingers. That's a patient 15, and he walked him. He walks Mosby, and now the bases are loaded. For George Bell. Another RJL Classic coming up here again, it looks like. Bases loaded, one out. 
Bottom of the ninth, five to two. Tribe fans sinking Grand Slam. We'll find out. Bell is 0 for 3. He got on base by an error. And Dave Little says George Bell was a beast. Yes, he was. He had 28 home runs this year, 17 against righties. It really doesn't matter who they have up there on the mound. Fingers will pitch. It really doesn't matter against Bell. One out. The Blue Jays are going to play for two. They're not going to go infield in. They'll play for the double play and, and, and trade it out for a run if possible. Fingers on the mound. Fans here at Exhibition Stadium. Here is the pitch. It's a tough 54. It's a ground ball to third base. Bell's double play ratings of five. Fingers is a six. That's a seven. They will not turn the double play. The throw will go on a seven, and that is higher than both of these. The throw will go to first to get Bell. Actually, no, the throw goes to second to get Mosby. Orge does come in to score. Comes in to score. Mosby is out. They can't turn the double play. They would, have, they would, they would go sit, try to turn it. So that is two outs, but it's now five to three. Fielder's choice, but a run does score. Five to three now. And here is Jesse Barfield, and he is just as a beast as Bell was. Barfield, nine homers against, 18 homers against right-handers, 277 average, but now it's five to three with two outs. They're going to keep fingers on there. They're going to let him pitch. Jesse Barfield. I mean, fingers was the closer. This is what you get paid for. Garcia on at third. Doesn't mean anything. The infield is normal. Barfield now a chance to be the hero for the Blue Jays. Fingers, checks, and deals. Here it comes. It's a tough 91, and it's a ground ball to shortstop. Up with it is Riles. He's got it. Pumps once, pumps twice. Throws to first. That's your game. Brewers steal it from the Blue Jays here. Five to three. One run for the Blue Jays on two hits as the Brewers win this game 5-3 to three here at Exhibition Stadium. Don't go away. Ten-minute ticker coming right up. And the final line score, of course. For the Milwaukee Brewers, five runs, seven hits, three errors. For Toronto, three runs, 11 hits, and three errors. It was an ugly ball game. Uh, the win's going to go to Higuera. He gets the win. Dennis Lamp takes the loss as he tried to come in for the to get it. And Raleigh Fingers does pick up the save. Timeout for 10-minute ticker coming up. Hope you guys enjoyed that ball game. I certainly did. A good matchup between two teams that are winning in their respective divisions. Let's see how the rest of the league goes today on June 27. We already know the, Blue the Brewers beat the Blue Jays. The New York Mets take on the Chicago Cubs. My Mets have been playing pretty well lately. They start with an eight, and unfortunately, the Cubs will win that game three to two. 
course, as soon as I say that, the Mets lose. San Francisco at Cincinnati. That's a six. It's a win for the Reds. Reds win it three to one. Atlanta taking on Houston. I know Steeler fan rooting for the Astros. That's a three. Oh, it goes to the Braves. Two to nothing. As I know, Steeler fan will say that was rigged. St. Louis taking on Philadelphia. That's an eight. A win for the Phillies. They win that game six to two. Cardinals have been having some issues lately. Montreal taking on Pittsburgh. Expos win that one eight to three. Los Angeles against San Diego. That's a six. A win for the Dodgers eight to three. Not a full slate of games on the 27th. And we now go to the 28th. Yep, Steeler fan says rigged. Baltimore taking on Boston. That's an eight. That's a win for the Red Sox, nine to four. They get the win there. Minnesota at the White Sox. That's an 11. The White Sox get that win, four to two. Toronto taking on Detroit. That's a seven. The Blue Jays back in the win column, five to three. California, Kansas City. That's the Angels winning nine to seven. Milwaukee against the New York Yankees. That's a six. The Yankees win it two to one. Cleveland against Seattle. That's an eight. Mariners shut out the Indians seven to nothing. Or I should say they shut out the team that will, they shut out the Cleveland baseball club that will be formerly known as the Indians seven to nothing. Oakland against Texas. The A's get that win five to four. Atlanta against the Dodgers. That's a nine win for the Dodgers, seven to one. Philadelphia against Montreal. Expos win seven to nothing. Chicago Cubs over Pittsburgh. Another 11. That win goes to the Cubs, six to nothing. Cincinnati against San Diego. The Reds win another one, five to two. They still, the Cincinnati Reds still lead the National League West. Houston taking on San Francisco. Oh, that's a win for the Giants, 7-4, to four, as the Astros lose another one. Sorry, Steeler fan. New York Mets taking on the Cardinals. Can my Mets get a win? It's a 12. Yes, they do. It is a 10-4 win over the Cardinals. And that does it for today's 10-minute ticker. If your team won today, congratulations. If they didn't, there's always tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow we have the Cubs and the Reds. Inside pitch, 85, one and gone. And we have the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Montreal Expos tomorrow night on payoff pitch. Steeler fan, Dave Little, Tribe fan, Captain Carl, baseball demos, Dave Gardner, SDG replays. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Always a pleasure when you guys show up. You guys are the best. I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay healthy, stay smart, and stay strong. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Brewers steal one from the Blue Jays tonight, 5-3. to three. See you guys tomorrow.